This is going to be a bit of a complicated video because while we did get some Mass Effect 5 development news, it comes at a very high price. Just yesterday, EA announced another round of layoffs and while Bioware seems unaffected as of recording this, we have learned that Mass Effect 5 is still in pre-production, which to be fair is expected. Bioware is currently all hands on deck for Dragon Age Dreadwolf's release. And we know that they are doing their full reveal this summer with hopefully a release announcement, but we don't know exactly how long all of Bioware will need to be working on Dreadwolf. Presumably once the game ships, Bioware will move everyone to Mass Effect 5. But we don't know if there will be Dreadwolf DLC or what Bioware will look like moving forward, depending on how Dreadwolf even does. And I think there's two things that we should talk about. First, Mass Effect 5 is far away. It's years away. It hasn't even started actual production and is actively still hiring devs for the project. While they've made several hirings and they are building their team, Bioware has also been at the root of several layoffs. This game is still far out. At first, when I heard the 2029 date said by Jeff Grubb, I thought, hey, that's unreasonable and that sounds stupid. But now I'm kind of like, well, maybe actual development won't even start until 2025, which would probably mean at least three to four years in active development, which seems to be on par for the course in game development lately. So 2029 does sound like it could be reasonable. Now, if Bioware moves all of its devs to Mass Effect after Dreadwolf ships, and they've been able to do quite a bit with their smaller team, focusing on pre-production, maybe actual production won't take as long. But I would still estimate 2028 at the earliest. I used to think 2026 was a reasonable possibility, but there's just no way, especially with Bioware's smaller team now. So I think we all need to be extremely patient and also hope that Dreadwolf does well. And that's the second thing that I want to mention. I hate to be bleak and to be a doomer, but the games industry is not doing well right now at all. There are nonstop studio closures and mass layoffs and so much industry turmoil that it's really hard to look at a game that's so far out and feel optimistic about it making it even to its release. And although the EA announcement today was absolutely terrible, they did say they were going to focus on their own owned IPs, which does include Dragon Age and Mass Effect. And maybe this means a possible focus on these two franchises moving forward, because I think if they're properly handled, they could be largely successful. And we have been seeing way more Mass Effect merch and even collaborations as of late. So maybe the next few years look good for Mass Effect. That's me being extremely optimistic and hopeful. Maybe that rumored Mass Effect show is actually happening, and EA is truly going to focus on capitalizing on Mass Effect's potential. Maybe we will see a live action and more collaborations. Maybe in the years leading up to Mass Effect 5, we could see more expanded media and more Mass Effect content in general. Even if it's just things like Commander Shepard and Fortnite, which I'm honestly surprised hasn't been done already. And on the opposite side of this, I think and I hate that it feels like there is a real possibility that if Dreadwolf does not do well, it could be Bioware's last game. If Dreadwolf, which is Bioware's sole upcoming title, does not do well enough to not only earn money moving forward, but also recoup the years of tumultuous development and years lost from reboots, then I don't see Mass Effect 5 even happening. Last year, Bioware moved its live service game, Star Wars The Old Republic, to Broadsword, so it currently does not have any income from any live service game, which seems to be EA's bread and butter when it comes to earnings. So a lot is riding on Dreadwolf, and I truly do believe in the team and that Dreadwolf will be a really good game, but I think it will have to be an amazing game to repair Bioware's issues right now. There has been a lot of restructuring, and it seems like Bioware has taken a step back 
and reassessed moving forward. And I hope that Dragon Age Dreadwolf shows that renewed focus and brings back what we expect and know from Bioware games. And I guess we'll finally know this summer when we see the major reveal. And while this means Dragon Age is finally around the corner after almost 10 years of development, this leads me to another question. Was Mass Effect 5 teased too early? Obviously, they couldn't have predicted needing everyone for Dreadwolf, and they couldn't have known that their teams would be made smaller due to layoffs. But if Mass Effect does not come out, even in 2027, that's seven years after the first tease. And if it comes out in 2029, like Jeff Grubb said, that would be almost 10 years of N7 day teases and almost 10 years of waiting after that first initial tease in 2020. I think there is a very real and justifiable reason to show game teasers early because not only does it keep the games relevant, but it also increases development interest and studio interest. And that helps drive the development forward with hiring and resources and income. But if this game is that far out, what does the next four or five years of N7 Days look like? I personally am okay with teases because I love the speculation, but even last year, some fans were heated with gamble, and I don't think this person was alone in their opinion. I don't know if four or five years of more N7 Day vague teases is enough to keep the fans from going feral. I feel like people will build resentment and frustration and will get upset that they thought Mass Effect was much closer. And the thing is, is that fans are not entitled to information. And Seven Day is a way to celebrate the franchise that the devs have continuously participated in. So while on one hand, I absolutely understand that they feel that they need to show things, I also don't know if they should be showing things if they aren't ready to be shown. I don't know, it's complicated. There's fan expectation and then the devs planning to show things for N7 Day. It's just hard to imagine what four or five more N7 Days look like, especially if the game is nowhere near. So if this is the case, I hope there is something there to fill the void. I don't think the next several N7 Days can only be vague hints teasing Mass Effect 5. It just doesn't seem sustainable. And another sad and depressing aspect of this is while the entire games industry is absolutely falling apart, we know that Bioware has unfortunately fired some of its best talent. And those devs are still fighting for proper severance pay. As of October of last year, we haven't been given any updates and it's not like we're entitled to updates. But I do hope those devs who have been at Bioware for almost 30 years have both found their footing elsewhere and have been paid their proper severance. So yes, this is a bleak topic, but I think a lot of people have genuine concerns with the state of the gaming industry. And that means with Mass Effect 5. With the sad reality of corporate greed, lazy AI, and projects being canceled, devs are being taken advantage of and treated poorly while also having no job stability. I think moving forward, I will be paying a lot of attention to smaller studios, where hopefully the devs are more appreciated. Which reminds me of Casey Hudson's new studio, Humanoid Origin, which he has stated is anti-AI, with a focus on the people who actually make their games. And I hope we see more sentiment like this in the gaming industry, with appreciation for the devs that create these games. I will always advocate for devs and the people behind these games because they make the game. It's not the corporation, it's the people. You don't love Mass Effect because of Bioware. You love it because of Patrick Weeks and Matt Rhodes and Casey Hudson and Jennifer Hale and Mark Muir and so many other talented people behind these games. All of the people who came together to make the game, all of the concept artists and all of the writers and voice actors and all of the people who brought that world to life are worth celebrating and protecting. And they are not a company. They just work at one and I want the best for the devs. So with the gaming industry being so fucking bleak right now, thank your favorite writer or voice actor or sign petitions to help the devs establish unions. Because the sad reality is that these layoffs and closures will be felt for years. 
there have been several cancellations and studios being completely closed. And we're seeing a ton of game devs choosing to leave the industry while also seeing some forced out. And this will inevitably mean less games. It will mean less projects and smaller projects. And it will mean more delays. There's just so many domino effects we haven't seen yet. And we haven't even seen the full effect of what this industry will look like in a few years after losing so many talented devs and losing their trust in an industry they are supposed to love. So I just wanted to talk about the complicated video game industry and recognize that the people behind these games deserve recognition. And I hope that for the sake of the talented devs at BioWare, Dreadwolf succeeds and we do get Mass Effect 5. And that would mean that we get an amazing story written by Mary DeMarle and the team. And we get to see new concepts from Derek Watts and the talented devs behind the Mass Effect team. I want to see what they want to show us. And that's all. Let me know what you think about all this. Are you worried about Mass Effect 5 and Bioware? And are you planning on playing Dreadwolf? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.